In this video, we're going to take another look at this data that Catherine Kozak uses in one of her videos. Here's what happens. With a particular tumor, after chemotherapy, the tumor begins to show up again. So here's some data about the number of months after which the tumor showed up after chemotherapy. Our goal is to produce a frequency distribution table for this data. Because this is an electronic document, we can easily come in here and copy the data, uh, highlight the data and copy it and paste it into an editor. I'm going to use the editor in our studio. I'd like to, to take this data, turn it into a vector and store it in an object called X. So I'll use the concatenate function to do this and between each one of these numbers I need to put a comma. When you do something like that, you'll likely use some clever search and replace strategy to get the commas all put in place. That's just a part of the munging the data. So here we've got this data. It's all stored in X. Now we could easily ask R to produce a histogram of this. And think about a histogram. It really is a graphical representation of a, of a frequency distribution. So the information about the frequency distribution must be hidden in this, uh, in, inside of here. By default, the histogram produces bins that are open on the right-hand side and closed on the, open on the left-hand side and closed on the right-hand side. The, I, I like to have them closed on the left-hand side and open on the right, so I'm going to add a right is equal to false in this histogram. If we highlight that and, and run that, then it produces this uh, histogram over here. I'd like to extract the information from the histogram so that I can build the frequency distribution. So I'm going to store that histogram in an object called H and then I'm going to ask R to print out that H. You'll notice that what it shows us is that H contains a number of things here. Uh, a vector called breaks, a vector called counts, and so on. If we come down here and ask for what the structure of H is, we discover that it's a list. It can't be a data frame because each of these things are, are different sizes but it, it ends up being a list that contains a number of vectors, a character vector, and some other issues here. But of particular interest, it tells us what R used when it created its breaks, and it tells us what the count is in each one of those uh, breaks. Between 0 and 10, there's 4. Between 10 and 20, there's 9. Between 20 and 30, there's 7, and so on. So actually, the histogram is kind of hidden right there between those two uh, pieces of information. So I'm going to pull out that information about the breaks uh, and just store it in something that I'm going to call breaks. We've used a function called cut before. Uh, we're going to cut this data set X by these breaks that we've got, and I and I want to to count the left hand side of each interval instead of the right hand side. Let's highlight that and just look at what we've got. You'll notice that for each of the characters, each of the values in X, 19 for example, it says that it's going to be assigned the character, the categorical variable, uh, from 10 to 20. Uh, 18 is between 10 and 20, 17 is between 10 and 20, and 1 is between 0 and 1. So it produces a categorical variable uh, identifying which one of the bins each one of these values ended up in. So in the script, I'm going to store that, that cut in something that I'm going to call categories, and uh, I'd like to, to take a table of of those categories. I'd like to count up how many of each item is in uh, each one of the categories. If we run that, then the table looks like that. Between 0 and 10, there's 4. Between 10 and 20, there's 9. Between 20 and 30, there's 7. These are, you'll notice, the same values that we had when we looked at, at that H object and uh, 
what was it called? Counts. The 497697, 497697. I like data frames better than I like tables, so I'm going to coerce this table into a data frame uh, with the command data dot frame. And so if we highlight that and run it, then there is our frequency distribution. Between 0 and 10, there's 4. Between 10 and 20, there's 9, and so on. This is kind of a clever way to, to use the data that's already created by R when it builds a histogram to build a frequency distribution table.